everyone, I'm Zinnia and I'm glad you could join me for Artful Living. This is going to be my first in a big series of videos where I hope to share with you the latest goings on at Artful Gathering and with life in general. Um, going back to summer 2017, we presented our seventh annual online art retreat and all of our brand new workshops were based on nature. And so each one of our instructors had just explored their own imagination to see how they would interpret this theme. And so we had so many different uh, really awesome takes on how to incorporate nature and organic things into our art. And being that our art instructors also teach a variety of different genres, there was always something to learn in each one of the classes. So to bring you up to date on where we are from last year, um, as you know, our productions are just all fresh and brand new every year. So we do have some classes that we encore, um, but most of our workshops are just brand new for that year. And so I have already received um, a lot of our um, DVDs that are in the 2017 production and they are amazing. So I'm just going to go through with you really quick to tell you which ones are done in production and available now for purchase. That would be the Alvin Tree with Luthien Tai. Isn't she awesome? We have a hair for all seasons with Kathy Pendleton. There's Kathy. We have Tassels and Tiaras, another beautiful hit class by Holly Levesque. This class explores doll making uh, in so much detail. Love her work. There's Holly. Hello. And we have Metal Embossing from Alicia Hart. She is absolutely amazing A to Z. This is a great DVD. And there is Alicia. We have Wear Your Story with Leslie Marsh. Believe me, by the time you complete this workshop, you will be in love with your little stories and your little storybooks. And here is Leslie. An Artist Field Kit with Sandy Babb. Oh my gosh, can I tell you that this workshop is so detailed. It has so much so much of everything in it for art journal making, you will absolutely not be disappointed in this. If you love art journaling and taking from nature and it being inspired by nature, this is an amazing journaling workshop. And there is Sandy Babb. Another amazing class by Debbie Anderson called Shadow Lane. This is one amongst many of her beautiful and unique workshops on mixed media jewelry making. And she explores Chatelaine and also some really fantastic ideas in her bonus project. And there is Debbie Anderson. This one is called Stuff of Dreams. This is with Karen O'Brien. This is a beautiful class that takes you from the inspiring drawings that you can create to paintings and to, uh, and to uh, soft sculpture dolls out of fabric. And here is Karen O'Brien, another workshop that I think you will absolutely love. So these are available right now in our DVD store, and they are exclusives. They are presentations exactly like uh, what was presented in our summer online art retreat. So I hope that you'll enjoy taking a look at that. So for 2018, I just want to let you know we are going to be doing a uh, summer art retreat based on Southwestern. Uh, inspirations, uh, even cowboy, cowgirl inspirations, and are also native culture themes, which can it, it can span as far as the artist can imagine. And that's one of the things I so love to share with you every year is the amazing diversity of voices and interpretations and art genres that we share. Um, my favorite of all things to do is to include different voices, to include people from all different areas of the art community and beyond because those ideas are just fuel to what we do 
And so many times, you know, I'll take a workshop or even if I don't have time to do the entire project, I will learn so much. And then that little bit of knowledge that inspires me from one class, you know, when I go to create something else, little, little pieces of threads will weave in and out of my own art that's influenced by so many of the different artists that I have the opportunity to learn with. And so I always encourage you to explore and to, to look at different types of art and see, you know, what you can take away from it that might help bring you your own art into a different, you know, a different dimension, a different area of exploration. Um, I really think that's important and I think that by doing this, we give everybody a chance to feel included and that is one of the most important things that Artful Gathering is all about. So one of the things I want to share with you is I want to share with you some wire work that I did. But hold on, it isn't art art. Well, maybe it is depending on what you call art. So let me show you what I mean. I took a class with Paul Christian Cordos. He teaches wire work. Wire work, I don't even know if that's really the best way to describe what Paul does. Paul has such an amazing imagination. I think he sees in wire. Um, that is just my opinion, and what I mean by that is he can take an idea or a vision that he has of something, and before you know it, he can turn that vision into a work of wire art. Now, it takes a lot of years, obviously, um, and practice to get to the point where you are going to be able to make great big giant installations and different things like he does. So I'm a person that I am very comfortable with where my limits are. I'm comfortable with exploring going on beyond my limits, um, but I'm very practical too. So when I took the class with him, I started to think about how it might apply wire work to some of the things that go on in my little life of art and doll collecting. And so I created um, these little tiny miniature hangers that I use to um, to uh, hang my doll up, my doll clothes. And so I can actually create a little closet where I've got all of my little doll clothes hanging uh, by really cute little hangers that are just the right size and they're durable. And so I have my, um, let's see if I can share this with you. And so my clothes are hanging in a, um, a little vintage doll wardrobe and I can enjoy the best of all worlds. I can bring in some wire work that I learned with Paul. Um, I've done other things like little business card holders and flowers and things like that. And I've adapted from the things that he's taught, things that will apply to my life. And I hope that that's what you take away from our classes and that you enjoy the different ideas that are introduced to you. I also wanted to share with you that I just got to meet Joanna Grant. Joanna Grant lives in Canada and she was coming through town where I live in Northern California. I was so thrilled. So um, I met up with her and, um, and she was fantastic. She is also known as Joanna Banana and she's one of several teachers that I've had the absolute honor to meet through the years with Heartful Gathering. But I wanna show you something that she gifted me. I can't wait to show you. Can you see this? Oh my gosh, is this not the cutest tote that you have ever seen? I am going to sh uh, share a link with you as to where uh, you can get these, but I just absolutely love it. This is Joanna's art made into a tote. Look at that. Can you see that? I love birds, so um, obviously I had to choose the one that had birds. But I, I, this is so Joanna, and I absolutely love it, and I will treasure it always. And you know what? You know what? Now I have a place to put my art on the go bag um, because I had it. I don't even know what I've been keeping it in. I had it in a backpack. I had it in a computer laptop bag. But now I, I want to show you. See, I got all my art supplies in here, and I can carry all of this with me. And I can take Joanna's bag and create on the go. Oh, and there are videos that you can watch to see how to make 
um, how to fill your bag if you have one, and also how to use this, um, oh, what do they call this? What do they call this board? For some reason, um, it's, it's, a, it's a corrugated plastic uh, board that is used for sign making. But anyway, there is a, a, a video on how to use this, and you're all welcome to take a look at that. So coming up, I'm going to show you how to make those adorable little wire hangers. And if you'd like to make some for your own collection, um, you can make these big or small, however, whatever size you want to make. You can make them for your grandchildren, your daughters, um, whatever makes you happy. So I'm really proud to share this little design that I made inspired by Paul Christian Cordos. And thank you, Paul. And we look forward to seeing you for Artful Gathering 2018. I'm going to show you how to make these hangers based on the doll size dresses that I collect. These are Blythe dolls and I believe their body size is about the same size as a traditional Skipper Barbie doll. So you can actually, you know, modify what I'm going to show you to fit any any doll size. What I normally do when I go to size my wires is I may do a few practice runs on my template hanger. So what that means is I might make a few hangers and experiment with the size that I think works best. Usually if my hanger exceeds the shoulders by about a half of an inch, then this hanger will work for long sleeves as, long, as well as short sleeve dresses. And so as you can see here, I have a long sleeve dress um, and the hanger works just fine in it and it's not distorting the fabric. So once I have created the design template, then I will trace around it so that I can kind of keep my hangers about the same size. And if I need to make more hangers later, I have this template I can go back to and I can keep the sizes pretty consistent. You can eventually also just use this as the template, but why I like to make a second one the second template is, is just based on the hanger before I do the wire turning. So I will make a template based on the pre-curling of the ends and that way I can always go back to it. The wire that I'm going to use is galvanized wire. I bought this wire at my local hardware store. It is 16 gauge. It is a pretty heavy wire. Um, but I like to use a heavy wire for this because I want these hangers to be very durable and last a long time. Now the trick with this wire is you're going to need a really heavy duty wire cutter and I don't like to destroy my jewelry pliers so I invested in one of these heavy duty husky uh, flat nose pliers. I also went with the serrated sort of grooved interior jaw um, because I don't want to hurt my hands when I'm working with this heavy um, wire. So I like to have this to kind of ensure that if the wire slips or my hand slips, I'm not going to have an accident. Because I know I'm making a small um, hanger, I'm not going to need a lot of wire. So just by eye and having done these for a while, I know that I'm not going to need a whole whole bunch of it. So I'm going to just break off what looks to be about, oh, I'd probably say about eight inches. Now this wire is pretty hard to bend and if you don't want to chew up your hands, um, I just slowly turn it in and I create a little bit of a fish. And then after I do that, I just sort of move the wire back and forth this warms the wire and makes it a little bit easier to bend. And then I will straighten it as best I can with my fingers. And so basically it looks like a long misshapen hairpin. The next thing I do is I watch these tails so that they don't stab me in the hand and I kind of bunch them in my hand and keep those tails sticking out. Then I've got my pliers on my table 
and I'm putting the uh, I'm putting the wire into the serrated part of the jaw. This helps to avoid slippage. And then I'm slowly giving it some pressure just along the top, keeping my fingers clear of the jaws. And then eventually I will get that squeezed about as tight as my strength will allow. And it's still somewhat misshapen. Now I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm just going to grab the tip of the bend and I'm letting the pliers do the work in making that top hook. I have this a little bit off so I will take my round nose pliers and give it a little push and then that will help to even out the hook. Now this is a heavy wire so I don't want to manipulate it more than I have to and hurt my hands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take now my flat nose pliers and I go just about to the top of my finger. My finger is hooked into the hanger and I will give this a bend so that one wire will go in one direction and the other wire will go in the opposite direction. Then I take and I give this a little bit of a squeeze to line this up. Then I'll use my thumb to give the hanger a bit of an arch. Now this, the more time that you put into this, the, the smoother that your bends will be. And I'm not always perfect at it, but with practice it does go a lot easier. Now I'll go back to my template, and here is where I may have experimented a little bit until I have found that perfect length. And then I've created the template from it. So I have a little bit of extra length here that I am going to snip off. And when I check this side, I know that I want to cut a little bit off on this side. And now it lines up pretty well. I also may want to straighten out everything and make sure that the hook is, is straight. And then I will go with my round nose pliers. I grab the tip and I usually go about a quarter of the way down from the top and I start to turn. I'm going to try and go slow so you see that I just bring the wire around into a circle. And I go on the other side and I do the same thing. When I get to about this, this far, then I just kind of take and try to get the two sides to match as best that I can. If you have a bench block, you can give this a slight little hammer just to straighten everything out, but this normally works out really well for me. And most of the time I'm pretty consistent, but not all the time. Sometimes my hangers are slightly bigger or smaller, but that's okay. That is the fun of making these. So this is how I would display my dresses and my skirts. For the skirts it's pretty easy. All I usually do for the skirts is I'll create a little bit more of an umbrella shape for that, for the hanger. And then when I hang them up, it helps the skirt to keep its flare and it hangs up really easily. It makes it really easy to find clothes when you want to dress your dolls and display them. So I wanted to give a little shout out to Sharon at Blythe's Big Closet at Etsy.com. I buy almost all of my doll dresses from Sharon's store. She makes some of the most beautiful, sweet little dresses in all different types of styles. And I hope that you'll pay her a visit if you enjoy shopping for Blythe too. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching.